Investing. <laughs> Hello, investing friends, friends of financial freedom. Welcome into Investors Club. Got a great show for you, if I could say it. We'll look at three awesome investing themes. Uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you. Small caps, we know small caps have been, uh, in general, but if we look at the, uh, if we're because we are not billionaires, we know we want to uh, go into the small caps to do our individual stock picking because that's where the Warren Buffett's the world cannot go. And so, the, but this is a great time for it in general because the IWM, all the small caps, the Russell 2000, all the small caps have been destroyed for a long time. And so they're off like like uh, 30% from their highs still. And so the small caps look ready to go. And they always also, the small caps, uh, they, they go first. If there's about to be a bull market, they tend to go first. They tend to be the first ones. So they could be, they, they, they look interesting by themselves. And we'll see the flows show, uh, show that they're very interesting. And then we will look at, uh, we've been talking about, of course, biotechs. Bio, even though, even though I, I, I'm still steaming about not being able to uh, personally leverage the turn like I wanted to, uh, there's still a, lot, a long way to go. Biotechs have been destroyed for three years, even though it's been two weeks of goodness. Uh, there's still a long, a long ways to go. So there's so small caps and biotechs. There we go, small cap biotechs, but foreign stocks. Uh, as we've done our portfolio, we included two foreign companies. They didn't happen to be biotechs, but they, they did both happen to be profitable companies that are both under a PE of five. And one of them has a huge margin of safety in a cash pile that's almost its market cap. The other one has growth of like 70%. So there, if you look in these foreign markets, so there, there, there's other there's other evidence that hey these foreign markets have been are way out of whack with the with the U.S. market. But in, when I was doing my individual stock picking, I got to tell you, there's some that are like, what the heck? I mean, there's really good, there's good values. There's there there. I mean, there's there's there's. there's I've, I've been at this a while. Like the values in American equities are great, but if you look at the international stuff, it's even better. So the international stuff. So there we go. So the small cap biotech, and then we're going to say the foreign. So, so then I was saying, okay, so are there any, uh, so we, we, we've talked about some, but how about, so is, is that a theme for, is that, so three, there's three converging themes there. If we look at stocks like BPTS, Compass, Oncolytics, and Valneva, there is four biotechs that we've picked that are foreign small caps and, you know, and, and, and would fit the bill. So that, so, so that there's a theme and there you go. So I gave the whole thing away. So you can hang up the phone. I just gave the whole thing away right there. Uh, great day in the market. Jay Powell came out and said, you know, it, it's too soon to say much. And markets were like, great, super duper. And they took right off. He said, I have nothing to say. And the markets were like, finally, we needed that. So the markets, everything is green. Everything in my... Uh, Investors Club portfolio is green. Cassava is green. It's Christmas season. It's green. I guess red is green Christmas season too. Anyway, let's take a look at some of this stuff. Uh, so let's start with Tom Lee. Tom Lee has been the hottest hand of all of the talking heads. He said last October was the bottom, two, two Octobers ago, he said that was the bottom. And he was right. He was bullish the whole time. And that was the scary time when everybody was, uh, was bearish. And we personally were bullish, but he, we helped, he helped us be bullish. And he was, when we, when, we, we, when we called the turn of the year last year, he was, we, we pointed to Tom Lee, some of the things he was saying. We didn't just say follow him, but we pointed to some of the arguments he was making about inflation being licked. We did a presentation. He did a whole presentation, and then we, we repeated it on this show, and it was dead on. And it, it, was, ba it was basically that inflation was licked, and, and, and now I can't even remember what else it was. But anyway, he, he's, he's had a hot hand, and he points out, again, we're not just, no, he's not just saying small caps. He points out, he's got good info here, the flows. And so I, I've been listening to, I, I love listening to podcasts from smart investor types. And one of the things I heard recently uh, is, is don't fade price, but do fade flows. So price getting, so the idea is, like, oh man, those, those big seven, those prices uh, or, or whatever it is, there's the bubbly stuff. Yeah, yeah but the, the prices can keep going and, and, and get even more irrational. But the flows though, if you look at the flows, like the TLT, uh, like, the, like for 40 years, it was the flows that propped up the SPY and the TLT because of the 401k. So money keeps flowing into that stuff. 
So if you look at the weekly flows, monthly flows, yearly flows, whatever, the SPY and the, and the TLT, the long-term treasuries, they just they get all the money and things. But then you can look at the flows between the different sectors and things, and, and, or, or the, the small caps and things. And so what Tom Lee is saying here, money is flowing out of the small caps. So that's, that's, that should be selling, but the values are so good, they won't sell off. The prices won't sell off. People are saying, no, I'm gonna, I'll just have to sell some large caps. So I'll have to sell some money markets, I guess. Because the money's got to come from somewhere, somewhere, and I'm going to keep, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep those prices of these stocks. So anyway, so the largest outflows in uh, two and a half years in IWM, that's the small caps. So it's been getting killed for three years, two and a half years, and just now we get the biggest outflows ever because the crowd is always wrong. So they're flowing out at exactly the wrong time, and and he's saying that the biggest outflows. The the uh, it's up slightly. The prices are actually up a little bit. Now it's all biotech. We know that. But so what? Biotech got killed way too much. So so he's saying the fact that the flows are, the money is leaving, but the prices won't go down is a huge bullish sign. So in general, small caps are just great, and this seems like a great time for small caps. Uh, so there's the flows. That's the, of the Russell two thousand, the IWM. And then here is the U.S. is near extreme peaks versus global ex- equities, well exceeding the 1960s and 1970s period of the nifty 50 stocks that got all bubbly and the 2000 tech bubbles that got all bubbly. So there's the nifty 50. Man, that's the worst it's ever been. Even the Internet bubble wasn't that wasn't that bad. But now it's way out of whack. The U.S. seems like there's been just a huge flight to safety since COVID. Well, I guess since since the great financial crisis, since the great financial crisis, it's just been nonstop U.S. I, I would say COVID. COVID didn't derail, but it's just been straight up basically. I guess it went up even more straight. But and it's, but anyway, it looks it looks like it's finally stalling, finally taking a break. But anyway, like I was saying, looking in these equities, the one like it's hard to say the the, the biotechs. We can say they're undervalued, but they don't have cash flows to go on. You can just compare. Like there's insurance companies. And they're like half the price when the international ones, some of them like it's they're they're just they're just uh, the international equities. And, and that would make sense if this is twice, if it's twice or more the yeah, like I was saying under five. And then some of these insurance companies in the America are like 10 times. So it's 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 more than twice as much the undervaluation. And that's what I'm seeing, like the, the like just in the insurance companies that have profits and have uh, numbers to work with. So anyway. Uh, and then Luke Groman. So then there is the dollar strength. So this is a big one. I didn't talk about this yesterday, but I, I, I talked about this yesterday, but I didn't, I didn't get to the implication. And so this is an implication of that is that and, and I showed the wrong chart. So I talked about Luke. I, I said that uh, the U.S. is eventually going to print a lot to buy all these treasuries. And uh, that's going to you know make a whole lot more dollars. But they've been doing that since the quantitative easing has been happening since the great financial crisis. And we printed so much since the great financial crisis, and yet the dollar's only gotten stronger. We saw that yesterday. The dollar's only gotten stronger. And so in all these, and as if you've been listening to stock reports for the last 15 years, uh, the companies that have profits, they've been saying now, uh, with the global companies that have profits, they say our profits were this, but uh, X currency, it was this. And so if you listen to foreign companies, and, and so if it's a foreign company, or if they have foreign money coming in, it's the, the currency exchange uh, hurts them. So anyway, because the dollar's been strong. So if you're getting foreign uh, currency, you've, you've been losing, what, 5%, 10% a year extra, uh, or just, anyway, it's, it's like an extra inflation that you're, that you're on, top, on top of the U.S. Anyway, uh, so an implication, and that is because, so, okay, there's a dollar strength, but wait a minute, why is there a dollar strength? Didn't you just say they printed all that and then the dollar only got stronger? Yes, because foreign countries printed even more. So, and that's just going to, and, and so I said, so I asked Luke Groman, what's going to stop that? Isn't that just going to keep happening? Like we print, yes. Uh, but so I, wanted to, I wanted to know for the future, is the dollar only going to keep getting stronger? No matter how much we print, they're just going to keep printing more, right? He said, no, starting in August of this year, we started seeing that they started selling treasuries, that, they're, that, uh, that the dollar strength getting stronger and stronger puts a lot of pressure on them. Uh, their economies are getting weaker and things like that. Anyway, they're under pressure. Now it looks like they're selling treasuries. And so, and so I, I showed the wrong chart yesterday. I showed the Dixie, which is the dollar versus foreign currencies. And, then, and it's a good chart to see. And it's right that it got stronger. It got strong. So here's, 
here's 2008 and nine, uh, the great financial crisis, and the dollar's only gotten stronger. So that's the beginning of quantitative easing. You're kidding me, the dollar only got stronger? Yeah, because foreign central banks did it even more. And then I said in August of this year, uh, we started seeing that they started selling treasuries, but the, the dollar only got stronger through August. It only started getting weaker in October, but I, I should have shown TLT because they were started selling treasuries and it didn't make its way through to the dollar yet, but it did make its way into the treasuries themselves. They, they were selling treasuries and look at all, this is what Luke Roman was talking about. Here's August here and zoom Zilla. And he's saying treasuries got obliterated in this. And that's what he was saying. And now in this tweet that like, maybe this tweet was, this was also to me because this is sort of the same thing answering my question after he answered it in the video. He's saying, look, at, he, or he's, he's retweeting this person saying, I, I talked about this yesterday, but I didn't get it right. China records first ever foreign direct investment deficit. Direct investment liability is a broad measure of FDI. So just to show it goes negative for the first time ever, going back into the 90s anyway. And Luke Roman says, in my opinion, this is interesting on its merits and its second derivative implication. China theoretically needs to sell something to finance offset this. In the same quarter, Chinese FDI fell. Long dated U.S. Treasuries crashed nearly 20 percent. So that's what he was talking about. I, I said, let's look at the dollar to see that. We need to look at the TLT to see that. And he's saying that's only going to keep happening more. And that is going to weaken the dollar. So going forward, not only right now is the, are the foreign companies so undervalued relative to U.S. companies, but going forward, this, uh, the, the negative of having foreign currency should turn into a positive. That we, should, that we should see the dollar should weaken versus foreign currencies from here. So, the, so just, owning a foreign, just, just owning a foreign currency versus the dollar would be better. But it just, but don't you don't want to sit in currency? So owning a foreign com company, if you can. And so with that, uh, what do we say? Compass, BPTS, Biophytus, whatever it is, Oncolytics, and Valneva were the four were the four foreign small cap biotech. So there you have it. There you have it. With that, my investing friends, let's go to the phones. Bill, good morning, Joe. Matt is doing a great job fighting. Good morning, Bill. Matt doing his great job fighting back on Twitter and protecting Saba. Allegedly, he has Elizabeth Bick making threats against herself from burner accounts. She loves playing the victim. We know that that's part of the shorts game plan is to play the victim. Yeah, she uh, maybe when I gave when I gave Elizabeth Bick credit uh, for having a uh, a person show up on my account to like, uh, to say that she was being, uh, oh, uh, you know, how, uh, uh, look what you're putting up with. Oh my gosh. Uh, I, I said that she did it on my account, even though no one even interacted with her. She's like, Oh, look what they're doing to me, whatever. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't occur to me. That was her herself. Yeah, I guess so. You know, and I thought all those accounts were, maybe she's proud of herself for knowing foreign languages or using chat GPT or something. Cause a lot of them are, are like foreign language accounts. So I wonder, maybe that's her little sneaky little angle. Good morning, Shaping. Great to see you, my friend. MT, morning, Joe. I'd never heard of the Volkswagen stock store you mentioned yesterday. Yeah, if you looked it up, it's amazing. It's, they were in big trouble. You know, auto manufacturers, we talk about why they're terrible companies. Now, Tesla is maybe very different, but we talk about the, the market is just too big and there's no barriers to entry. So anybody with money, and in order to be, in order to get economies of scale, you need to take a very small chunk of the market. And that, that's like a, 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 a if, you, if, you, if you need to get a big chunk of the market in order to be viable, that's a really good, and you are, that's like a really good protection. But if anybody can come take a small chunk and be viable, that's a bad thing. And so it's a terrible, it's a terrible market in the first place. Even though nothing has sold maybe more, maybe nothing has grossed more revenue than cars. I mean, it's been, there's maybe no more successful consumer product than cars, and yet the auto manufacturers just go out of business. And, and, so, and so people were shorting the heck out of Volkswagen, sending it to the, to, like they, they were thought they could send it to zero like they did with, like they think they could with cassava. And then it got bought out and everybody said, oh no. <laughs> and everybody tried to cover it at the same time. And the stock went to like 9,000 a share or something like that from like, I don't know, 20 a share or something like that. It was, yeah, and, and it became briefly the largest company in the world by market cap. Yeah, <laughs> I guess Porsche bought them out, yeah. Argentina planned to replace the peso with the US dollar. So dollar should get stronger, I guess. So on at the margin, I don't know if it would be enough to offset 
uh, the 7.6 trillion of treasuries that Japan and China uh, and, and the rest have that they might be selling. But on the margin, that's a good thing to point out. And other companies perhaps could follow suit. Thank you, Trin. MG, good morning, Joe. Good morning, MG. What are your thoughts on Athera, Atha? I don't know. Off the top of my head, I don't know. So yes, small caps are less multinational than the S&P 500, which was one of the reasons I used to like uh, small cap in like back way back in my former life when I was writing on Seeking Alpha, like way back, I, I would sometimes write about small cap index funds because then you get, I was writing about why the U.S. is a better market uh, and, and, and I would write, you just get more, a more U.S. centric uh, thing because yes, they're, they're less multinational. Great point. Maybe you learned that from me. Who knows? But that's a great point, Trin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, two, two, good, two good ones from you today, Trin. Thanks for the email. E What are, you, what are your thoughts on Argentina going to the dollar? I bought their ETF Argentina because of it. I don't know. I don't know. They're, the, fa the fact that uh, they weren't on the dollar was actually really good for their stock market, right? I think they and Turkey, I think if you look, haven't they been doing really well by, <laughs> by printing so much, just like when we print so much? Like their inflation is like 100% or worse or whatever. They print so much, and 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 and, but I think it's so good for the, the you know. The, so then their their markets go up so much, their stock markets go up so much. So I, I'm not I'm not really sure what to think. I don't know. It's an, a very interesting question. Silver, sorry, I didn't see her coming. Oh, Silver, how dare you! All right, guys, great to see you, and we will do it again in over the weekend in the Discord starting right now. And sign up in the in the the description for the free. It's just free right now, but then I'll have your email. I can send you some stuff. And then we'll get going with the, with all the the real stuff. It'll just be great because we got everything going now, and I'll, I'll finish up the website over the weekend because we're up to speed on everything else. So that's just gonna be great stuff. And we'll maybe yeah, maybe we'll. It's been two years and almost two years to the day, so maybe we'll officially do an official launch on Monday. That'd be really fun. All right, great to see you guys. We'll do it again on Monday. Maybe we'll start the show on Monday, and uh, I'll see you in the Discord. Have a great weekend.